Hey, before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Hey, geek guys and geek gals. Welcome to another episode of Mixel Picks Transformers Primetime. I'm Mike. Happy New Year. And uh, I want to apologize for not having a video uploaded last week. I say on the channel that I upload a video every week and um, I want to stay true to that. I haven't always hit that mark, but that is my goal. And I want to make up for that. I'll see if I can upload two videos within one week in the relatively near future. And today we're going to look at something that I just got in from showzstore.com. I don't know what this is. I don't remember what I ordered, but uh, let's pop it open and find out. Nice Shozy store box here, two year anniversary. Ooh, oh man, that is so cool. That is the uh, Dark Master, the worn version. This is the updated uh, version that they did. You know, they just released Dark Master not too long ago, but then they said they were coming out with a worn version, quote unquote. Um, so it's got, uh, you know, like, it actually looks more like uh, some of the cartoon show uh, where you actually see that his metal has been like scraped up, dirtied, um, worn. So uh, yeah, that should be this guy. And I, I like the attention to detail that Shozy Store did with these corner guards on the box to help protect it in shipping. That's that's really nice. Okay, battle damaged version right there. So there you got it. Yeah. Interesting back uh, side of the box. Um, I like the use of the arrows that uh, Hasbro Takara Tomy uses on uh, some of their uh, marketing to show that it transforms one to the other mode. Um, kind of a cool splash image here. And then on the side, we've got some uh, artwork. It's nice. We've got the same kind of artwork, I guess, that's probably on the first box, although I have not um, opened that yet. So, on this side, we've got our uh, label, Battle Worn version, made in China, and bottom. Ah, that's cool. Got like this line art cartoon rendering here of uh, old Megatron from Transformers Prime. Very cool. And let's open it up. All right, so it says, if seal is tampered or broken, please verify contents before acceptance. Thankfully, it's nice and uh, label shut, and it's uh, label shut on this side too. I'm just making up that term. I don't even know what label shut's really supposed to mean. Um, but there we go, let's go ahead and open that. Now, I did get Dark Master um, a while ago, but I still haven't opened it and checked it out. So this will be my first experience with uh, the Dark Master mold, the Voyager scaled version of the deluxe class Megatron from uh, Transformers Prime, the uh, first edition series. Okay, got some instructions in here. Nothing else in the box. Just put that back here. And uh, let's take a look at those instructions. Simple fold out, just purple and white and black. Oh, 
excuse me, they put a little color down here at the bottom. Look at that. It's got a little screwdriver there with the yellow handle. We've got some red, yellow, purple, black, white. And I'm liking the way this guy is looking already. Um, packaging is, is nice. It's fairly secure. The, the foam here at the top is a little uh, thin, so not much protection there. But overall, this packaging looks pretty good. So uh, let's uh, take them out. Man, this guy's big. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I love this dark metallic that's going on and the brushed metal effect. Oh man, well he's got really, really tight joints. Um, that's very cool. And then as far as getting him standing, uh, let's put his heel spur out. There we go. Get him in his basic standing mode here. This little shin part looks like it's kind of split apart. This one's fairly flush. This one has a little gap. I'm not sure what that's about. It's got a gap on the back side here too, as opposed to this one. Nice and tight gap on the back. Pressing it tighter. It seems to be fitting better. All right, so maybe it was just not uh, transformed very well to go into the package. But look at the detail on this face. I mean, that face is fantastic. It's like you're watching the cartoon show. All right, so let's get him standing. Ah, stands pretty fast, stands pretty easy. And how about his accessories? got his cannon. So there's that. That's pretty awesome. Cool. And let's see here, we've got some blades, it looks like. Here's a hand blade. Wow. They did this really well. Look at that, that brush, brushed metal work. And then even the purple hue that they put here that's you know kind of faded that is a really really nice touch just adding in that little bit of color there just to make it seem more realistic and the back side's not so important so you got the little sprue circle there but yes very very nice looking and the second blade so you can give him double blades, which is a very cool thing to arm him with. And you can see the purple seems to be more apparent on this one than on this, oops, on uh, this one versus this one. Oops, not backwards. So that's kind of interesting. But I guess, uh, yeah, they're both good. And uh, that just adds to the realism that they're not exactly the same. They're not worn the same. So two blades. Very cool. And then something else in here. Oh, the dark saber. Yes, the dark saber. Let's see. Is there anything else in there? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're clear. Yeah, looks like that's it for what's in the package. So the dark saber is. Uh, Pretty nice looking. And it's got this um, holder that can go on his back, I believe. So he can carry the Darksaber on his back. Let's see if we can't get that to set up. All right, so this is supposed to go into here, it looks like, similarly shaped but uh, I can't quite figure it out, so I'm going to uh, go to the directions. I know, don't go to the directions, don't go to the directions, you don't have to do it, you can do it on your own, you got this. No, no, I need the directions. So, uh, let's take a look here.
Well, since I don't speak Chinese, um, the words aren't exactly a lot of help. Uh, but uh, the illustration does show that that's supposed to go in that uh, spot, so let me see if I can finagle it in there. All right, so word to the wise, just be careful. This is just a tab and slot system. It doesn't even really, uh, I was afraid I might break one of the small tabs here because it just really is supposed to be pressure fit right into that slot, um, as well as on the top here, a uh, similar slot at the top. It doesn't really slide and snap in or anything. It just pressure fits in. And um, then on the back side here, if you can see, um, sorry, I don't have great light right here, but if you can see right there, um, it's coming through that hole there and I don't think there's really anything to keep it from popping through any further. So just be aware that it's a pressure fit thing and um, you know, just try to work that tab, those two tabs into position here for this uh, sword holder. So then the uh, dark saber apparently just kind of angles in and then can slide down and hold. So now Megs has his dark saber. You can give it to him at an angle. Oh, whoops. Okay, well it just it just kind of fell through the hole, but that's okay because um, it's on there. Um, I think it fell through the the hole here in the back, but there we go. Let's get his other weapons on him. Circle, uh, circular post just goes into, I guess, this uh, strangely hexagonal um, hole, but that's fine. And then uh, just meets up there with his, uh, the V of the gauntlet. Same thing on this side. There's that. And he's already looking really cool. And his cannon. All right, his cannon. Oh, cool, it comes down so you can actually, I guess, use it as a hand blaster if he wants to. I'm saying if he wants to, like he's a real person. But uh, there we go, let's just collapse that back. Uh, back this way, there we go. And then that little metal peg there goes into this here, and then this fin slots into the back of the cannon. So it all fits, all right. It all fits pretty nicely. Uh, one, of a, one of the bummers though is that you can see the screw holes here on the outside of his arm. It'd be nice if they had been put on the inside of his uh, cannon maybe instead of on the outside. But from this perspective, he looks pretty cool. So no, nothing to worry about there. Um, and as you might've seen, I just swiveled his bicep. So he's got a bicep swivel. Uh, he's got full 360 on the arm, except he does collide with this piece on the back when you rotate. Um, okay, so the arms, the shoulders can go down pretty much. The back of his arm is colliding with this little clip here, so. He doesn't have like a butterfly shoulder hinge inset there, but his arm does go down flush on his side, almost flush, not quite. If you bend his elbow, then it can go flush. Um, but then, let's see, there we go. So if you have him with his arm correctly down at his side, his arm does stick out a little bit and then you raise up his arm, he can go pretty much, yeah, he can go 90 degrees. So there's that. There is some rubbing that happens here with this fin and this collar. Um, paint apps are nice here at the top. Got the purple around his neck here. Got purple on the back of his head. Would have been nice if they had painted that screw purple, maybe. Um, the vents here on his backpack, nicely metallicized in purple. So that's neat. 
a little hard to see in this light, but yes, that side is purple as well. Um, he's got some purple accents here up on the top of his, of his thighs. Purple metallic on his calves. Purple metallic on the insides of his uh, forearms, where those jets are for his alt mode, I'm assuming. And he's got a purple accent here at his waist. Now, I'm not sure if this is supposed to hinge up. It might, it might hinge up. Um, yes, it looks like it hinges up. So maybe that's more the way it's supposed to be, as opposed to down so low, but let's see. Oh, there we go, yes. Okay, so when you pull him out of the package, the uh, hip abdomen shield is actually positioned lower, and which is good if you're going for the uh, ultimate protection of the groin area. But um, otherwise, it slides up and goes there to complete the abdomen. So that being said, does he have a waist swivel? He does not have a waist swivel. Okay, if we pull this away and back down, does he have a waist swivel? He does not have a waist swivel at all. Um, so let's go ahead and put this back up. And there's that. And he can do pretty much the full Splits, um, although one leg looks like it's binding more than the other. Could be a trick of the light, or trick of the eye. Hmm. Actually, it does kind of look like one of them is not as flexible as the other. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Eh, maybe it's just the way things are rotated. But generally speaking, yes, he has the splits. All right, now, what else can we say about this guy? Overall, I think he's looking really nice. I mean, not even overall, I think he looks really nice. So let's get him into uh, alt mode and see what he looks like. Okay, so, um, as I was trying to transform him, the beginning steps, I found out that uh, my Megatron has two right hands. Um, and a note on the hands, they are molded. They do not have individual digits that actually, you know, close and open by themselves. So they do have uh, molded hands. And this hand is freaking backwards. So I'm gonna have to contact uh, Show Z and see if they can give me a replacement hand that's the correct hand for the left hand side. So, there you go. That's a, a bummer right off the bat, but uh, just FYI. All right, there's something wrong with this microphone cable now. Um, I think it's this adapter or it's the jack itself. See, I just touched that and um, it's having issues, um, as you can see there. Um, so hopefully this is gonna be all right. We're going to go ahead and roll, and uh, here we go. Putting this down, I'll be checking the audio every so often just to make sure it's still looking good. One thing of note uh, when you're doing the transformation is that uh, these images are quite small, so seeing some of these details, and uh, maybe it's me showing my age, but some of these details are really hard to make out. And uh, not having transformed um, Transformers Prime Megatron before, in any form. I was uh, a little bit uh, hesitant to do some of these maneuvers, didn't know exactly what the tolerances were or um, you know what the issues might be. So just word to the wise, um, be careful when you're transforming this from uh, bot mode to alt mode and uh, go ahead and find a transformation video if you need it because uh, these instructions can be difficult to make out. That being said, I was able to transform Megatron from bot mode into alt mode and um, I think he's looking pretty cool. As, as much as I can tell without having an actual image from the show side by side, that looks like Megatron from Transformers Prime to me. And um, again, the brushed metal look is just really nice. Um, really like that kind of realistic finish. It doesn't look like it's a super clean um, 
bought, and it actually just kind of looks like you just kind of see some of that real metal uh, appearance. So, very cool. One thing I don't like about the design of the character, uh, not that it's a fault of uh, APC Toys, but uh, I never liked the fact that Megatron's eyes popped out from under this uh, lid here. Uh, it would have been cooler if he had just had a bubble, even. Um, I just, I don't know why you would have a Transformer have his head outside of the ship, um, except for the fact that they did that in the 1986 movie with the sweeps, and I thought that was stupid anyway. Um, anyway, uh, I digress, and uh, overall, I think I got the transformation right. There is a question as to whether or not this tab here is actually supposed to go into this slot here. Um, if it is, then I definitely don't have it positioned right, but um, things seem to tab together otherwise. This uh, tab here went in nicely. Um, this tab here, obviously uh, the opposite side, um, you know, it's gonna do the same, so. Um, the two arms tabbed together there. And uh, yeah, he looks cool. Um, there you have it. APC Toys, battle-worn version of Megatron, Transformers Prime, APC-02. So we'll get a little look at him um, in uh, some nice lighting here and give him a spin. Uh, you can see him here in his alt mode. He's looking nice. These edges are catching the light really well. And like we talked about before, um, that paint is just, uh, those are nice accents. It's a nice metallicized purple that's on there. And those brushed metal accents uh, work really well. Okay, and in bot mode, well, you can see there he's got two right hands. Uh, I guess that's better than having two left feet. <laughs> But I am going to be contacting Shozy Store and uh, seeing if I can't get a replacement hand for that. Hopefully that's that simple and I don't have to uh, send the whole bot back. But that really shouldn't be an issue because Shozy Store was good last time I needed a part. Uh, that was missing from my Transform Element TE-03 Mirage. Um, they sent that to me and um, no charge and uh, really good customer service there. All right, so getting APC's Dark Master, their battle-worn version, APC-02, ready for his uh, spin here. Um, I went through some of his articulation that I hadn't messed with before. His knee bends to about a 90 degree with the thigh coming up um, pretty much 90 degree. Um, he has a limited ankle rocker, which is actually in use right here in this position, in this pose. Um, so it's not a great one. It's not gonna give you like super posability um, angles, but there is a rocker. He unfortunately does not have a hip swivel. He just has that hip uh, rotator. So it's not like you can uh, move it forward and back and just rotate it around uh, as far as I found. So he does have limited knee and thigh posability with only uh, a twist at uh, right above the knee on the thigh. Also, there is limited articulation in his arms. He only has the bicep swivel. It would have been really nice if they had had maybe two points of articulation on the arm, maybe one below the elbow and one above the elbow. But as far as I've seen, he's only got the one above the elbow. So the posability of his arm cannon seems to be really limited by the fact that he's only got that one rotation on the bicep. That being said, he does strike an imposing pose here. Um, he looks really good and um, he's gonna look good on a shelf, that's for sure. The transformation is not too bad. I'm not a great transformation guy. I was able to transform him back without looking at the instructions or a video. Um, if he's wrong, well, that's my fault. But um, I think I did a decent job. I think he's back to uh, pretty much the way he was out of the box. And those brushed metal accents that they put on here really work, really catch the light nicely, really make it look more realistic, I think, than maybe just a flat paint, although I have not seen the pristine version yet because this one was the first one I opened. So kind of going backwards in time here with their releases uh, as far as Dark Master goes. And as you can see, uh, he's got that awkward uh, right hand for a left hand there. And his hands do swivel at the wrist, but the fingers and thumb cannot close into a fist. That's some articulation that I really would have liked to have seen. All right, and last but not least, uh, let's do that Transformers Prime scale comparison that uh, I didn't do yet. 
All right, so here we have first edition Optimus Prime. And I know what you might be thinking, uh, that can't be first edition Optimus Prime because he's got the animated uh, non-battle mask face. But um, this is not the APC version. This is first edition. This is the Dr. Wu custom head that came out, uh, you know, before APC was ever even heard of. So this is the first edition and uh, this size comparison is accurate to the first edition release of Optimus Prime. <laughs> I am loving the size uh, difference here. This looks awesome. This is kind of like David versus Goliath. Um, Megatron is uh, appreciably bigger than first edition Optimus. Um, has a really cool energy to the uh, showdown here of them looking at each other. Judging by the title sequence of uh, Transformers Prime from season one, Optimus shouldn't be this small. Both he and Megatron are supposed to be fairly well matched as far as height is concerned. Um, so I think this uh, scale difference is inaccurate, but I like it. I think it's fine. I think it adds to the drama. And so I would be okay with these two being on a shelf together. Very cool, very imposing. All right, well, that's it for this episode of Transformers Prime Time. Thanks for watching. Um, we have uh, officially passed, well past, the 300 subscriber mark. I'm still excited about that. Thank you so much. Uh, let's keep the channel growing. Thank you to all you Transformers fans who are subscribers out there and uh, who have become subscribers recently. If you're a frequent watcher, you know, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and uh, make sure you hit that bell icon as well so that you get notified every time a new video is out and ready for you to check out. Also, if you've got anything that you'd like to discuss about Transformers Prime or Transformers Masterpiece, leave it in the comments below and uh, let's see uh, what kind of discussion we can get going with uh, myself and other fans. Thanks for the great discussion around the Minasaur trailer from XTV and um, I hope you had a chance to check out uh, the episode of where I buy my Transformers Masterpiece and my Transformers Prime merchandise from. If you haven't, give that a look. Uh, you might find some resources that you didn't know were out there. And I highly urge anyone who is still watching who has never seen Transformers Prime to uh, look it up on Netflix, uh, wherever you can find it, uh, check it out. It's a, it's a great series. Uh, it gets off to a little bit of a slow start, um, but you know, Give it some time and uh, you're probably gonna enjoy it if you enjoyed the G1 Transformers uh, in the past. All right, geek gals and geek guys, my fellow Transformers fans, I'm Mike, and until next time, happy collecting and be prime to each other, everybody.